Hello students, we will be discussing the chemistry of photosynthesis uh, in this video class. Uh, this particular video class is actually divided into two modules of uh, a single video uh, and uh, chemistry of photosynthesis. Uh, this is uh, this uh, photosynthesis we have uh, gone through in our lower classes, the basic, aspect, basic aspects of photosynthesis. Now, it's a process which occurs in green plants, algae, photosynthetic bacteria and some organisms like uh, euglena and its role is to trap solar energy and use this to drive the synthesis of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide and water and with release of uh, byproduct namely oxygen. Now this is the only process uh, in the universe by which uh, solar energy is trapped and preserved as chemical energy in organic molecules. Uh, it is uh, calculated that around 170 billion tons of dry matter is produced by this process annually. And there is a uh, simple basic equation which represents uh, the, this process of uh, photosynthesis. It's a highly simplified representative equation 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 H2O in the presence of light and chlorophyll. Uh, it gives C6H12O6 uh, that is a representation for carbohydrate along with the release of 6 oxygen as a byproduct. Uh, so this is a simple process, this is a simple equation actually, but the process is not that simple. It involves uh, a number of strategies adopted by plants, uh, a number of uh, biochemical reactions and uh, metabolic processes involved are involved in uh, the chemistry of photosynthesis. So we will, uh, we will uh, go on to see the details of photosynthesis. So we start uh, with discussion of some of the basic aspects of photosynthesis. Now, first of all, uh, these are the autotrophic uh, photosynthetic autotrophs, uh, which can be seen here in this slide: the cyanobacteria, euglena, kelp, which is an algae, then uh, mosses, ferns, and higher plants. All these are called autotrophs, which are capable of uh, synthesizing uh, sugar, uh, sucrose, or starch uh, using carbon dioxide, light, and water uh, with the production of uh, or oxygen, the byproduct oxygen, and with the help of chlorophyll. So, this is a basic equation also shown there. Now, the overview of uh, photosynthesis the strategy, the particular strategy adopted by plants. Now, the, the photosynthesis can be divided into two phases the light reaction and dark reaction. Light reaction is also called photophase or Hill reaction. Um, that is actually proposed, it was actually proposed by Robin Hill and a dark reaction uh, is also called C3 cycle or a Calvin cycle uh, and that is after Melvin Calvin who proposed the, this particular uh, process. The strategy here, the, the, planned, the, the planned strategy here actually is to produce NADPH, the reducing potential and ATP, the energy currency during light reaction. Now during light reaction, the high energy electrons are utilized which are having high reducing potential. They are utilized for conversion of NADP to NADPH as well as uh, synthesis of ATP also. And in dark reaction what happens is that the whatever NADPH and ATP produced during light reaction are utilized for step by step reduction of carbon dioxide to uh, carbohydrate. So this is a strategy, basic strategy. Light reaction always take place uh, during daytime only because uh, sunlight is available during that period of the day only. Whereas dark reaction occurs throughout the day, uh, whether it is night or day. So it's uh, actually a misnomer. It should have been light independent uh, reaction, the dark reaction. And C3 cycle uh, is the main uh, reaction uh, or the main phase of the dark reaction. Uh, whereas there, uh, the, there is something else also called C4 cycle which complements C3 cycle. So this is the basic overview of photosynthesis and you can see here uh, the light reaction and dark reaction are, are, are shown in figures. It's a chloroplast here and a chlorophyll uh, molecules are also shown here uh, that is represented here and water is utilized, light energy is utilized to produce ATP and uh, NADPH. NADPH and uh, these ATP and NADPH are actually utilized here in Calvin cycle carbon dioxide comes in sugar goes out uh, and this is being utilized and uh, as a byproduct oxygen also is formed. So this is light reaction where uh, NADPH and ATP are, uh, are synthesized and the right one is the Calvin cycle 
Kalin cycle ATP and NADP are, uh, NADPH are utilized. Uh, it's a C3 pathway, there is a C4 pathway also. Uh, and this is more uh, an illustrative figure. Uh, you can see photosystems involved here, as well as uh, some more of the uh, intermediate substrates involved in, um, in C4 cycle or uh, Calvin cycle. Uh, and of course, the, the utilization of uh, water, this is uh, also used. Now, this is photosynthesis and uh, the, the, the um, yeah, these are the factors involved in photosynthesis. Now, of course, sunlight is involved. The visible range uh, emission spectrum 390, 760 nanometers uh, of uh, sunlight. Uh, it's being used for uh, photosynthesis by uh, specific pigments. Uh, the, the chlorophyll A and B, there are chlor chlorophyll A, B, C, D, E and the chlorophyll A and B are the most prominent ones. They utilize the um, solar energy of 400 to 500 nanometers wavelength as well as 600 to 700 nanometers wavelength. Carbon dioxide uh, is obtained from atmospheric air 0.03. A percentage of the atmospheric air is carbon dioxide which enters plants through the stomata. And water is absorbed uh, from the soil uh, and it is actually it's been proved that the oxygen which comes out uh, which is released is actually comes from water this has been proved by radioisotope studies and uh, the chloroplast the structure of chloroplast we have to see the structure of chloroplasts see uh, these are leaves the cross section of leaves the mesophyll cells the, the chloroplasts are actually concentrated uh, inside mesophyll cells and uh, you can see a uh, magnified chloro, um, mesophyll's chlorophyll uh, uh, magnified you can see the chloroplast here and the chloroplast can be seen here so this is a drawn picture you can see the outer membrane this is the outer membrane then this is inner membrane uh, so there is an intermembrane space here in between these two membranes and inside it there is a stroma you know just like mitochondria is having a mitochondrial matrix and outer inner membranes uh, this chloroplast is also having outer inner membranes and stroma instead of matrix this is called stroma and the, the inner membrane of mitochondria is having in invaginations on which uh, the cristae all the, I mean, this is called cristae in uh, mitochondria uh, where ATP synthesis is arranged whereas here there is no invagination of inner membrane instead of that Stroma is having certain flattened uh, lamellae, uh, flattened uh, lamellae or sacs, which are called uh, lamellae or thylakoids. And these thylakoids are spread throughout the strom stroma. Some of them are uh, are arranged like a pile of coins. So these are these are called granum. So there are uh, flat stromal lamellae as well as granal lamellae. And these lamellae or the thylakoids are uh, are uh, are having a lumen inside it or space inside it so there are actually three spaces in a chloroplast that is the intermembrane space the stromal space as well as uh, the the you can see here the thylakoid luminal space thylakoid luminal space so these sacs are actually having a space inside them that is thylakoid lumen so this lumen is very important Mm, that's why we are we are uh, we are discussing the uh, lumen here. Uh, so we have to be aware that we uh, will discuss more about this thylakoid lumen and the role of this thylakoid lumen in uh, the synthesis of uh, carbohydrates. So this is the mitochondrion just for comparison, and here you can see the mitochondrion and a chloroplast. Uh, so the figures can be compared here. And chloroplast photosynthetic pigments. And we know that chloroplast uh, chlorophyll is a photosynthetic pigment. Uh, for chlorophyll itself, we have got a number of different types of classes of uh, chlorophylls depending on the uh, the light it absorbs from solar and uh, solar light or the photons of a particular wavelength uh, it absorbs from solar uh, light sunlight. And uh, we have divided these pigments into principal pigments and accessory pigments. The principal pigments, they are capable of releasing electron from them upon excitation. Whereas accessory pigments, they, their electrons get excited but are not released. 
they are capable of uh, transferring their excitation uh, electrons are excited excited means these uh, electrons uh, accept photons high energy photons they jump into a higher orbital uh, so they are said to be they are said to be excited now when they come down to the ground level the energy of uh, excitation is transferred to the adjacent molecule so that this, this this transfer will go on from one molecule to the next one next one next one till it reaches a pr principal pigment molecule so this is the system uh, that works uh, and accessory pigments they are not capable of releasing electrons and this is important here and we will uh, learn how why this becomes important later so this is the these are the pigments yeah uh, chlorophyll a is a principal pigment as well as bacteria chlorophyll is also a principal pigment in bacteria whereas chlorophyll b uh, carotenoids like carotenes and xanthophylls, phycobilins, uh, which are present in bacteria, certain bacteria. These are all accessory pigments. And uh, uh, here, the chlorophyll A itself has got different types. Like uh, it depends on the the exact wavelength which is absorbed by the chlorophyll molecule. The chlorophyll A uh, uh, are of chlorophyll A six seventy three, six eighty, A six eighty three, six uh, chlorophyll A seven hundred, like that. So it basically depends on the, the exact wavelength uh, which is preferred, preferred by that chlorophyll, chlorophyll A. And this is the structure of chlorophyll A and B in general. It differs in the R group. The R group in uh, uh, chlorophyll A is CH3 whereas uh, CHO forms the R group in chlorophyll B. You can see here the tetrapyrrole head, the tetrapyrrole head there with the four pyrroles and the central magnesium. Uh, this is like the heme in uh, hemoglobin where iron is the central molecule uh, here magnesium replaces iron uh, because uh, be because the, the, the excitation of uh, excitation energy of electrons comes down uh, very slowly in uh, uh, magnesium so that the, the the excitation transfer is made possible here so uh, this is unlike iron in uh, heme and the, the head is hydrophobic, whereas tail, uh, phytol tail is hydrophilic. You can see the molecular formula also, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, it differs because of the difference in uh, side group, R group. Yes, and this shows the um, absorption of light energy at different wavelength. And uh, as I said, uh, 400 to 500 is the best range for uh, chlorophyll A and B as well as 600 to 700. And these are the best, uh, the, the best uh, wavelengths at which, at, at which uh, chlorophyll A and B absorbs light. And I can see that here, uh, it is the same wavelength, uh, the rate of photosynthesis is highest, which means chlorophyll A and B are the uh, main molecules involved in photosynthesis. And why, uh, if there are chlorophyll A and B are there, why there are other pigments also in uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, chloroplast? Because the answer is that uh, because uh, there are other pigments which prefer different wavelengths of uh, light, so that you know, apart from the preference of uh, chlorophyll A and B, uh, carotenoids and xanthophylls and phycobilins, they absorb other uh, wavelengths also. Um, uh, solar energy of other wavelengths also so that enhances it enhances actually enhances the uh, light reaction it enhances the uh, process of photosynthesis and carotenoids um, carotenoids uh, xanthophylls uh, and carotenes all these uh, you can read them as well as bacterial chlorophyll bacterial chlorophyll is a principal pigment in bacteria the molecular formula is shown there and this is the classes, different classes of bacterial chlorophyll, A, B, C, and like that. You can go through them. And photosystems. Now, as I said, we have got uh, principal pigments as well as accessory pigments. Uh, in chloroplasts, these pigments form clusters, clusters called photosystems. And primarily, there are two types of photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. So these photosystems are actually formed of accessory pigments and principal pigments we saw earlier. And there will be uh, around 200 to 400 pigments uh, forming a single cluster. 
most of them will be accessory pigments so that uh, more uh, more and more of the photons can be captured and electrons can be excited and will be sent from one place to another the excitation energy of the excitation will be transferred from one molecule to the other and it reaches the reaction center in the cluster and the reaction center alone is made of principal pigments so it's based on the 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 type of principal pigment that photosystems are divided into ps1 and ps2 and uh, you can see the the ps1 uh, has an absorption maximum of 700 nanometers so that is called uh, p700 and uh, for the system 2 for the system 2 uh, has an absorption maximum at uh, 680 nanometers and so this is called p680 so that is the difference between p, uh, pigment system 1 or photosystem 1 and photosystem second uh, the photosystem first has at the center the principal pigment uh, is formed by uh, chlorophyll A P 700 whereas in uh, photosystem second the, the principal pigment or the reaction center is formed of chlorophyll A 680 so uh, as also uh, these are arranged on the thylakoid uh, membranes the membranes of the thylakoid as we saw in the chloroplast there are certain uh, flattened stack called thylakoids or lamellae which form granum and you can see here uh, the photosystem 1, photosystem 2nd, cytochrome BF and ATP synthase. We will we'll discuss about cytochrome BF and ATP synthase later. These are arranged on the, uh, these flattened sacs and uh, you can see that uh, you can uh, discuss about it later. And these are the basic arrangement. This is the basic arrangement of a, a photosystem and in a complex of photosynthesis. Uh, you can see the sun, sunlight, the photons coming, falling on the accessory pigments. Uh, uh, this actually the electrons get excited. The excitation energy is transferred. The process is called the sensitized fluorescence. And finally, the, the excitation reaches the reaction center where there will be a chlorophyll A molecule and uh, depending on the photosystem 1 or 2nd um, it can be P700 or P680 so an electron will be released and this electron will travel through certain protein assemblies certain assemblies uh, so there, there is uh, where the uh, NADP is gets converted to or reduced to uh, NADPH and as well as um, ATP is formed and these constitute uh, the the uh, light phase and um, we can see uh, the light reactions uh, th this is the uh, light reaction uh, light reaction actually involves uh, uh, the these four processes these are the four processes photo excitation of chlorophyll photophosphorylation which may be cyclic or non cyclic production of NADPH the reducing potential and photolysis of water with release of oxygen so these are uh, not for different steps these are the things uh, involved or the purpose of uh, light reaction is shown here so this is photo excitation of chlorophyll this is already i i described the, the photo excitation, excitation actually happens uh, with the uh, with the fall of photons on leaves uh, photophosphorylation uh, photophosphorylation means uh, using the the photon and the energy of photons a phosphorylation or production of ATP is used I um, mean uh, uh, done and it can be through two different types of cycles uh, type, types of processes one is uh, cyclic photophosphorylation the other one is non-cyclic photophosphorylation then production of NADPH so that is important reducing potential as well as uh, release of oxygen that is another one that also is very important so this is called Hill reaction after Robin Hill uh, photo excitation of chlorophyll, absorption of photons by antenna molecules, electron gets excited. This is already uh, discussed. Uh, we uh, already discussed in the previous slides. Uh, photo excitation of chlorophyll means absorption of photons by antenna molecules. So antenna molecules in the cluster, the photosystems one and two, these molecules, the particular molecules accept photons from solar energy. As uh, as a result, their electrons get excited. The excited electrons transfer their excitation energy to the, uh, it is actually a short living process and it will transfer to the adjacent molecules. And uh, this process is called sensitized fluorescence. 
as a result as a result the the first one which transfers energy uh, the electron will come to ground level ground energy level and finally the the excitation passes uh, through certain molecules and finally reaches the reaction center or the principal chlorophyll a molecule okay after uh, photo excitation of chlorophyll we move on to see uh, cyclic and non cyclic photophosphorylation uh, this is actually the electron the excited electron released from uh, the principal pigment travels uh, through certain uh, high, high, this high energy electron with a high reducing potential travels through certain protein uh, cluster assemblies uh, in cyclic photophosphorylation uh, the electron which left the principal pig pigment reaches the same point whereas in non cyclic photophosphorylation the electron do not reach the same point from where it was left it is uh, going through so some other we will see some other pathways it takes some other pathways uh, the purpose of uh, uh, these photophosphorylation reactions uh, are that uh, the cyclic photophosphorylation results in production of ATP whereas non-cyclic photophosphorylation results in the production of ATP, NADPH and uh, it causes photolysis of water or photolysis of, uh, of water is a process which takes place during non-cyclic photophosphorylation along with release of oxygen from the water molecule which is split. Now one of the basic ideas of uh, uh, cyclic and non-cyclic uh, photophosphorylation when uh, were, were, uh, uh, it actually results in ATP synthesis is that uh, you can see here uh, the mesophyll cell membrane, mesophyll uh, cell membrane, uh, this is the mesophyll cell, cell membrane, this is mesophyll uh, cytosol and inside which chloroplast outer membrane, inner membrane, stroma and the thylakoid thylakoid is here with the lumen as you can see this lumen so here uh, what cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation do is that uh, these are uh, specifically uh, as far as ATP synthesis is concerned they are specifically they specifically lead to accumulation of H plus ions this hydrogen uh, plus as you can see the accumulation of H plus ions inside this thylakoid lumen so this is a uh, uh, this is a process which will lead to ATP synthesis later that we will discuss later but uh, ATP, uh, whether it is cyclic or non cyclic photosynthesis it leads to accumulation of H plus ions here so as a result what happens is that uh, there will be a, an electrochemical gradient between thylakoid lumen and stroma thylakoid lumen and stroma electrochemical gradient this is because of the accumulation of H plus ions inside this lumen Yeah, electrochemical gradient and this uh, this actually a proton gradient and electrochemical gradient that will uh, be the energy which is responsible for ATP synthesis now first of all we can uh, go through cyclic photophosphorylation as you can see the photo excitation of chlorophyll is shown uh, here the energy of uh, photons high energy like electron is uh, released from uh, here it uh, travels through a certain uh, clusters and reach back to the original position this is why it is called cyclic photophosphorylation now it involves PES1 only for system 1 only now, obviously chlorophyll A700 is at the principal pigment or the principal uh, position now the process uh, uh, generates ATP only and not NADPH and there is no hydrolysis of water as a, uh, as a result there is no I mean consequently there is no uh, 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 the the uh, release of oxygen also now we can uh, study cyclic photophosphorylation uh, here using this diagram as you can see this is a PS uh, 700 from where upon a light uh, for, uh, fall of photons the high energy electron is released from PS uh, 700 the high energy electron moves to a highest level like this that is actually uh, uh, along a redox potential it is uphill uh, uh, of a redox potential it, reach, uh, it reaches here where it will be uh, accepted by a primary electron acceptor from there it goes to uh, like this it goes to uh, goes through certain uh, 
the electron acceptor assemblies and come back to the same position. But as it goes through, uh, the first of all, it, it reaches the ferrodoxin. It's a iron ferrosulfur protein cluster from where it reaches cytochrome uh, BF complex. Uh, it's actually a proton pump. Uh, it is capable of accepting H plus. While it accepts electron from uh, the ferrodoxin, uh, ferrodoxin molecule, it accepts H plus ions from stroma and as it releases the electron towards uh, or to plastocyanin here, plastocyanin is a copper containing protein assembly. Uh, as it loses electron, it actually releases the proton to uh, the thylakoid lumen. So, protons are taken from stroma and released to thylakoid lumen. So, as a result, thylakoid lumen gets accumulated, gets concentrated with H plus uh, ion, uh, this proton. So, this is uh, what you have shown in the uh, previous slide, uh, H plus ion concentration or accumulation inside thylakoid lumen because of cyclic, AT, uh, cyclic uh, photophosphorylation. Now, plaster, from plastocyanin, uh, the, the, I mean, actually the, the uh, electron, uh, it travels down uh, the uh, downhill of uh, the redox potential here to reach back to PS700. Now, uh, we can see um, the, the process here, actual process of uh, H plus ion concentration, I mean accumulation. Now, this is stroma, lumen, cytochrome BF complex, electron passes to cytochrome BF and uh, what happens is that it accepts H plus from stroma and as the electron leaves uh, cytochrome BF complex, H plus ion is released, ah, like here, released uh, to uh, lumen then uh, causing accumulation. So this process, there's the process, process repeats, H plus ions are further released into lumen. Now this is non-cyclic photophosphorylation, as we know, it, in, uh, it actually causes um, ATP synthesis, it uh, uh, results in NADPH production as well as photolysis with the release of uh, oxygen also take place in uh, non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now uh, this involves photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, both of them. And this is how uh, photosystem second is the first one involved. Uh, I mean, this a photon, a high energy photon comes, uh, electron, high energy electrons are released from principal pigment for, of photosystem second, that is uh, 680. It travels uh, downwards, yeah, like this, down the uh, downhill, uh, the redox potential, and it do not reach back to PS680 but falls on. Uh, the next photosystem, photosystem 1 uh, and uh, from where uh, uh, a high energy electron from P700 is released yeah, like this. This is caused, this is caused by uh, reception of uh, further photons uh, on uh, photosystem second as you can see light energy, the sunlight falls on uh, this uh, photosystem 1, electron is released and this electron is accepted, ac accepted by a primary electron acceptor and mostly these uh, primary electron acceptor uh, is a pheophytin, a molecule called pheophytin from where it uh, travels to uh, travels further uh, towards uh, 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 towards reduction of NADP uh, plus. And this is a better illustration of uh, the process of uh, non-cyclic photophosphorylation and the photosystem second with the P680 at its center, the principal pigment upon which photons fall and electrons expelled from the principal pigment, high energy electron is accepted by primary ele electron acceptor. Uh, mostly it is pheophytin. From there, from that highest level, it travels down the energy level or downhill the redox potential. First of all, passes or accepted by plastoquinone, which gets reduced to plastoquinol upon uh, acceptance of a pair of electrons. Then uh, those electrons pass through cytochrome BF complex, which is actually a proton pump. It accepts protons from stroma and uh, that is released to the luminal space. So this is a process which contributes to the synthesis of ATP later. Now this uh, electron passes through plastocyanin and finally it is accepted by the uh, photosystem first here. And now uh, photons fall on it, on this uh, photosystem first and uh, finally the, the P700 principal pigment releases a high energy electron here and that electron 
uh, or those electrons are actually uh, really, I mean accepted by primary uh, electron acceptor then goes down the energy level accepted by ferrodox in here and then a couple of electrons travel to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. So this is how NADPH is formed. Now the NADPH is actually formed with the help of a, a couple of protons also taken from stroma like here. It is actually taken from stroma and this is uh, uh, actually catalyzed by ferrodoxin NADP plus reductase enzyme. Uh, now at the initial point here in the photosystem second there happens what is called photolysis of water that is splitting of water with the help of photons and with the help of a particular uh, protein enzyme like protein uh, a protein which is a manganese protein because it contains manganese uh, molecules in it four of them per protein molecule and now this manganese is evolutionarily selected for this purpose uh, uh, it is said that it's because of the uh, capacity of this manganese to exist in uh, different oxidation states like mn2 plus 3 plus um, uh, 4 plus and mn5 plus now as a result of uh, photolysis what happens is that oxygen is released per two molecules of water split a molecule of oxygen is released as well as uh, the electrons four electrons are released which actually fill the hole created uh, at uh, p680 here so you can assume that this electrons through this yes yeah through this electrons passes and electrons travels then travels it is the those electrons which actually uh, reduces NADP plus to NADPH also now what remains is H plus those H plus four H plus molecules are again uh, they are released to thylakoid lumen so this again contributes to the synthesis of ATP later uh, and further one more point though is that uh, this is called Z scheme also it is because it's just because the energy level shown here like this is how the electron travels it's like uh, the, the English alphabet letter Z so this is called Z scheme yeah now two types of photosystems uh, cooperate so this is what we have already discussed photons here photons here this is ATP mill cytochrome BF complex and NADPH production and this also we have discussed the production of uh, oxygen that is from water not from carbon dioxide this has been proved by radioisotope studies actually two molecules of H2O are oxidized to generate a molecule of oxygen for every four electrons passes through uh, this transport chain yeah this is the equation for it and we have already discussed all these things and this is a representation for accumulation of uh, H plus inside thylakoid lumen or uh, inside thylakoid, uh, thylakoid luminal space now this is the membrane which differentiates stroma from thylakoid space and it is actually inside the thylakoid space that H plus accumulates uh, it is those, through these processes this is photolysis H plus ions accumulate here or uh, um, after photolysis whatever H plus is released is released to the interior of thylakoid space so accumulation of H plus here again cytochrome BF complex is a proton pump that, that uh, also uh, accumulate help accumulate thylakoid space H plus and from here uh, what, uh, here what happens is that H plus is taken away from stroma so this also contributes to the uh, the um, H plus ion uh, gradient here across this this particular membrane and this has been explained by a particular theory theory of chemiosmosis or chemiosmotic theory by Peter Michel he is a Nobel laureate for this particular theory uh, it what explains what chemiosmotic theory explains is that as the protons are accumulated inside thylakoid luminal space uh, a, a transmembrane proton gradient of about 3.4 uh, pH units is created uh, it's because uh, the, the thylakoid lumen will have a pH of around 4.0 while the stroma will remain at around 7.4 so there will be a gradient proton gradient of about 3.4 pH units this creates a proton motive force and uh, an electrochemical gradient 
uh, which is responsible. The, the, that energy is responsible for the synthesis of ATP and this H plus can escape back to stroma through ATP synthesis, synthesis alone. Uh, and uh, the membrane is impermeable to H plus ion. So it can escape through this uh, ATP synthase alone. And the ATP synthase of uh, mitochondria as well as chloroplast are shown here. They are structurally quite similar. Uh, we have actually explained the, the structure of uh, F1FO complex in oxidative phosphorylation. And the CF1CFO complex is quite similar to it in structure. It has been conserved. Uh, for billions of years evolution to throughout the period of evolution it's been conserved structurally and functionally uh, and this is called cf1 cfo complex we complex because c uh, c uh, represents chloroplast and the structure is the head uh, is similar it uh, you can see uh, two i mean three alpha three beta gamma delta epsilon subunits in the head or f1 part and FO part, the stock, is having A, B, B dash and C subunits, C subunits which forms a ring. So we can uh, see the moving unit rotor as well as the stationary unit stator also here. It is quite similar, the structures are similar. We can see what are forming uh, rotor and what are the water subunits that form stator also. So uh, this is uh, ATP synthase and we can see here the H plus accumulation, it is different actually the, 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 uh, the process is uh, a bit different from the, the, what occurs during oxidative phosphorylation. Here inside the lumen H plus escapes through this uh, ATP synthase so as to form uh, ATP molecules. So this is chemiosmotic theory, chemiosmotic theory, the, the, the structure been shown here, uh, explained here, which we have already discussed. You can go through, and the chemiosmotic theory is also explained here. And one of the things that uh, we have to remember, note here, is that uh, a pH gradient of 3.4 is essential. And if the gradient goes below 2.0, which means the accumulation of H plus has to be perfect. If the the concentration is less, H plus accumulation is less. Uh, to create a gradient of uh, less than 2.0 only, then uh, ATP synthesis will not occur, will not occur. So this is chemiosmotic theory, you can go through it also. Okay, uh, so this figure further illustrates uh, the process of chemiosmotic theory and uh, synthesis of uh, ATP. Uh, you can see here the hydrolysis of uh, water uh, creates H plus ions here. Then cytochrome BF complex uh, again contributes to the, to the concentration or accumulation of H plus inside thylakoid space. As well as uh, the H plus that is taken away from uh, stromal space also contributes to the difference in H plus ion concentration across this membrane. That means the stromal space and the thylakoid space across that membrane a proton or electrochemical gradient is maintained as H, H plus accumulates here. It will escape through uh, ATP synthase uh, alone because this, uh, this uh, membrane is impermeable, impermeable to H plus ions. It can escape through this system only ATP synthase uh, CF1 CF1 CFO complex so this energy is used actually to uh, synthesize ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate so this theory uh, chemiosmotic theory has been experimentally proved also that was in 1966 by a person uh, named Ander Jagendorf what he did was that uh, chloroplasts were maintained at a normal pH of uh, pH 7 and it was uh, suddenly taken into a uh, solution having pH 4. Now the chloroplast acquires uh, pH 4 uh, and the solution, the outside solution in which chloroplast with a pH 4 inside it is there. The solution, uh, the, the pH of the solution suddenly changed to pH 8 uh, along with addition of ADP and inorganic phosphate. Now, uh, a burst of ATP synthesis uh, happens together with the disappearance of the pH gradient so across the thylakoid membrane. So this was observed and this was uh, uh, a very good experimental proof for chemiosmotic theory.
and uh, we can compare the process of uh, synthesis of ATP that take place during photosynthesis uh, with uh, uh, that of oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, ox the photosynthesis involve, involve uh, chloroplast uh, when oxidative phosphorylation take place in mitochondria. The, the protein cluster assemblies are similar but structurally different also. Uh, the assemblies are arranged on the inner membrane in mitochondria whereas, whereas it is arranged on the thylakoid membrane in chloroplasts. The accumulation of H plus takes place in lumen whereas the, the accumulation takes place uh, in mitochondria inside inner, in intermembrane space. The, the involvement of uh, ATP synthase is uh, similar, the structure also very similar uh, and the theory behind uh, H plus and con getting converted or used up uh, for synthesis of ATP is uh, chemiosmotic theory is the same followed uh, during both the processes for the production of ATP. Now the summary of light reaction is overall input is light energy and water. The overall output are ATP, NADPH and oxygen. And the basic strategy followed by plants was that the ATP and NADPH are produced during light reaction then they are used up during dark reaction. And they are used up during dark reaction or light independent reaction. It is also called a C3 cycle or Calvin cycle. C3 cycle because the first stable compound formed during dark reaction is 3 phosphoglycerate a 3 carbon compound and Calvin cycle because it was discovered or proposed by Melvin Calvin. The process in nutshell involves reduction of carbon dioxide to give rise to carbohydrates and the process uh, three processes are involved carboxylation of ribulose 1,5-biphosphate a compound which is abbreviated as RUBP reversal of glycolysis through which glucose and other, other derivatives are formed as well as this is a cyclic process the, 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 the first compound used RUBP is regenerated also you can see the details um, this is the figure of illustrate Calvin cycle it's the step one here carbon fixation then uh, these compounds are formed 3 phosphoglycerate 1 3 biphosphoglycerate glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate then step 2 involves condensation of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate uh, so um, some uh, glucose and other uh, material I mean, derivatives are formed then finally step 3 regeneration of uh, ribulose 1 5 biphosphate this is uh, uh, Calvin cycle you can see in detail here the first of all it's carbon fixation means carbon dioxide is fixed so for this this compound uh, six molecules of ribulose 1 5 biphosphate which is a 5 carbon compound so totally 6 into 5 30 molecules of carbon combines with the six molecules of carbon dioxide that is six molecules of carbon so that total of 36 molecules of carbon give rise to 12 molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate which means uh, 3 phosphoglycerate into 12 again 36 molecules of carbon this is called carbon fixation fixation of carbon dioxide by carboxylation of RUBP which is catalyzed by a particular enzyme Rubisco ribulose biphosphate oxygenase carboxylase a unique enzyme uh, in, in the enzyme world or living world it's a very slow enzyme so plants accumulate these enzymes in the leaves and that's why this is uh, actually the most abundant enzyme or protein in the living world. It's a very unique enzyme because it actually catalyzes carboxylation as well as oxygenation to contrasting types of reactions. The, the compound formed here 3 phosphoglycerate is converted to 1 3 by phosphoglycerate with uh, phosphorylation and expenditure of 12 molecules of ATP. And this is a, a short-lived uh, compound 1,3 biphosphoglycerate which immediately uh, gets reduced as well as dephosphorylated to give 12 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So there is the uh, utilization of ATP as well as NADPH which were produced during light reaction. The, out of the 12 molecules of uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, two of them are used for condensation that is step 2 condensation that means six molecules of carbon give rise to six carbon uh, compound which forms uh, fructose 6-phosphate and other uh, glucose and uh, glucose I mean, as well as sucrose and other carbohydrates. So out of uh, uh, 12, 2 goes for condensation here and the rest of the 10 molecules are used for the regeneration of 
RUBP here. So that forms a cyclic uh, process. Uh, RUBP regeneration uh, involves conversion of 10 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to ribulose 5-phosphate. Then uh, 6 molecules of ATP are further used, uh, used up for step-by-step -step conversion of uh, uh, this or regeneration of um, 6 molecules of uh, ribulose 1,5-biphosphate like this. And uh, this is uh, further um, illustrated here. Uh, fixation of carbon dioxide by carboxylation of RUBP, uh, phosphorylation of 3-phosphoglycerate uh, uh, as well as reduction of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate and uh, finally 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde uh, that is condensation, con go undergoes condensation uh, and uh, finally regeneration of RUBP. So all these we already discussed. Uh, the regeneration actually involves uh, many other enzymes also, more steps also, uh, aldolase, transkitlase, as well as epimerase and isomerase are involved. Uh, those steps we have not shown in the um, figure, uh, but definitely in, it involves these steps also. The regeneration involves uh, uh, expenditure of ATP molecules also, six of them. And uh, this is a more simplified uh, process of cy a Calvin cycle. Uh, you can... Uh, learn this also and uh, we can uh, uh, see the energy calculation for C3 cycle a total of uh, six molecules of carbon dioxide six molecules of RUVP are used up first along with 12 molecules of NADPH and uh, NADPH and 18 molecules of ATP so this is the formula six carbon dioxide plus six RUVP 12 NADPH plus 18 ATP uh, the for the uh, for the Synthesis of C6H12O6, that is the carbohydrate representation for carbohydrate, uh, RUVP used up are reformed, then 12 NADP plus 18 ADP and 18 inorganic phosphate molecules are also produced. The enzyme involved is ribulose biphosphate, the critical enzyme or the crucial enzyme involved is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase as we discussed. Uh, actually, the 50 percentage of the protein in leaf uh, is constituted by uh, this particular enzyme. So that's why this is more, the most abundant enzyme in the living world. Now, from a fructose 6-phosphate, which is formed by condensation of uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, we can uh, give rise or produce uh, glucose 6-phosphate, then glucose 1-phosphate. Uh, glucose 1-phosphate combines with the uridine triphosphate to give UDPG and UDPG uh, obviously it is the uh, it is the precursor of uh, production of sucrose so from this sucrose can be produced and uh, then uh, instead of uh, UDPG uh, ADPG or CDPG or GDPG uh, can also be produced uh, these are the precursors of starch but not UDPG. UDPG cannot be, cannot, be, cannot be used for synthesis of starch. And uh, UDPG can be used for the synthesis of cellulose. But now uh, this is the summary of uh, dark reaction or light independent reaction. Overall input is carbon dioxide and ATP and NADPH. The overall output is glucose and other derivatives of glucose uh, carbohydrates. And uh, this is uh, the figure which shows the uh, no, no, a brief summary of uh, the whole process of photosynthesis. You can see the light reaction as well as dark reaction given here like this. So this is uh, what we have gone through so far. Now uh, we can uh, see some of the alternate pathways of photosynthesis that is apart from C3 cycle there are other pathways also C4 pathway and CAM pathway are two examples but uh, these pathways actually uh, uh, complements or, or supplements uh, C3 cycle and definitely C3 cycle is the one which uh, uh, which uh, synthesizes carbohydrates uh, but uh, C4 and uh, a CM pathway actually helped help concentrate carbon dioxide inside leaves uh, and uh, this is uh, we have to see the role of rubisco here uh, because there is a process called photorespiration which uh, which uh, actually uh, reduces the efficiency of uh, photosynthesis uh, so before uh, we go on to see the, photo, the this process photorespiration we have to see the dual role of rubisco here we have already discussed it um, Rubisco is capable of uh, 
adding carbon dioxide to RUBP as well as oxygen to RUBP depending on the availability of these molecules, uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Now, when it adds carbon dioxide, it goes on to uh, complete uh, C3 cycle. But when oxygen, oxygen is in plenty and carbon dioxide is in short shortage, uh, what happens is that RUBP gets oxygen oxygenated. So that will uh, go on to a wasteful process which is called uh, which is called uh, photorespiration which actually uh, affects the proper glucose or carbohydrate uh, output uh, it's a waste of uh, time and energy and it utilizes rubisco as well as ca releases carbon dioxide inside mitochondria and this process is called photorespiration where um, rubisco is oxygenated so instead of a uh, 3 phosphoglycerate uh, we will get another molecule that is uh, phosphoglycolate. 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 So uh, this happens actually during intense heat and uh, a high concentration of uh, oxygen. So and uh, this actually reduces the efficiency of uh, a normal process of photosynthesis by uh, uh, around 25 percentage also. No. Uh, the high heat because uh, when the atmospheric heat uh, temperature is high uh, what happens is the stomata gets closed uh, so as to conserve water inside the cell uh, inside the plant plant cell uh, so um, what happens is that carbon dioxide do not enter the plant cells as well as oxygen gets concentrated inside the leaf uh, because the the byproduct of photosynthesis namely oxygen cannot be uh, released through stomata so carbon dioxide is in shortage and oxygen oxygen is uh, in, is in good supply so it undertakes what is called photorespiration and photorespiration as you can see here this is the figure which illustrates photorespiration uh, rubp is oxygenated to give phosphoglycolate uh, it, this is actually it gives 3 phosphoglycerate also uh, a molecule of 3 phosphoglycerate which is channeled to C3 cycle but along with that two molecules of RUBP go on to produce phosphoglycolate and this phosphoglycolate has to be the, the carbons those two carbons has to be recovered and for which phosphoglycolate is converted to glycolate and it passes or travel through this path to get back to chloroplast as glycerate. So the two carbons are uh, saved but at the same time what happens is that uh, it undertakes uh, um, it's a wasteful process it's a wasteful metabolic process because it uh, undertakes a long route as well as it, uh, it res results in expenditure of uh, ATP as well as carbon dioxide is uh, released inside mitochondria which is a waste product though unlike chloroplast chloroplast require carbon dioxide but require carbon dioxide but uh, not uh, not mitochondria so this is uh, photorespiration so what uh, plants uh, the, the, the strategy adopted by certain plants is that uh, 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 they accumulate or concentrate carbon dioxide uh, through some pathways and these pathways we one of them is C4 pathway, the other one is CAM pathway. Now, first of all, C4 pathway or the Hatch and Slack pathway. Uh, before we go on to see C4 pathway in detail, we have to uh, be uh, aware of what a C3 plant anatomy or leaf anatomy is. There. This is a mesophyll cells here, here, then bundle sheet cells here. So this is the arrangement uh, we can see in C3 leaf and whereas in C4 plants the arrangement is a bit different. The mesophyll cells actually encircles bundle sheet cells and this is called uh, Kranz anatomy and the Kranz stands uh, for crown. So this is uh, supposed to be a crown like arrangement. So Kranz anatomy is characteristic of C4 plants and in C4 plants the bundle sheet cells are plenty in rubisco so uh, the the c4 plants what it does is that the plant does is that uh, they actually uh, the the carbon dioxide received is actually received by a phosphoenol pyruvate in mesophyll cell pap 
which is a 3 carbon compound and it gets converted to oxaloacetate which is a 4 carbon compound that's why you know you you uh, you can guess that this is why uh, the C4 pathway is called C4 pathway because the first stable pro product of this pathway is a 4 carbon compound namely oxaloacetate. So this is oxaloacetate and oxaloacetate actually gets converted to another 4 carbon compound that is malate and then uh, it releases carbon dioxide inside the bundle sheet cells along with pyruvate. This pyruvate gets back to uh, mesophyll cell. Uh, so like that it goes. Uh, we can see this uh, uh, a little more uh, clearly here. This is the mesophyll cell, and this is the uh, yeah. This is the mesophyll cell, and this is the bundle sheet cell. Uh, carbon dioxide gets in. Uh, Phosphoenol pyruvate accepts carbon dioxide, one one molecule of carbon that, and it gets converted to oxaloacetate. So oxaloacetate uh, then malate with the help of uh, malate dehydrogenase. Then malate gets past the membrane of uh, mesophyll cell to reach bundle sheet cells and bundle sheet cells malate is divided I mean uh, it is actually uh, it releases carbon dioxide inside bundle sheet cells along with uh, formation of pyruvate. This pyruvate gets back to uh, mesophyll cell where it undergoes phosphorylation to go uh, to phosphoenol pyruvate or to recover phosphoenol pyruvate with the help of the particular enzyme pyruvate uh, PI dikinase which uh, splits ATP to release a molecule of AMP and a pyrophosphate, pyrophosphate. So that's a very unique enzyme there. Now here, this is a carbon dioxide which got released inside bundle sheet cells. So this is how we concentrate carbon dioxide inside bundle sheet cells. And this, uh, this um, bundle sheet cell will be having Rubisco uh, in its chloroplast uh, stroma. So, uh, bundle sheet is actually uh, rich in uh, chloroplast also. So, and the C3 cycle, uh, we know that the C3 cycle actually take place inside the stroma of chloroplast. And the C3 cycle uh, inside chloroplast, inside the stroma, it, uh, it undergoes C3 cycle now, C3 cycle to give rise to carbohydrates. So, this is uh, the, these are the enzymes involved, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase then dehydrogenase, dehydrogenase and pyruvate uh, inorganic phosphate dikinase and this is this is the it's actually uh, it's actually a uh, four carbon intermediate uh, smuggled into the bundle sheet cells that's that's what we uh, see here and Calvin cycle take place inside bundle sheet cells so as to release carbohydrate like this and uh, C4 pathway uh, it limits photorespiration how bundle sheet cells are away from the surface so less ex exposure to oxygen phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase do not have an affinity for oxygen uh, so it accepts carbon dioxide and gets to oxaloacetate a 4 carbon compound then phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase allows plant to collect a lot of carbon dioxide and concentrate in the bundle sheet cells where rubisco is present so this is it. Uh, from, this is how C4 plants and C4 plants. There are examples for uh, C4 plants here. Uh, some of them are fa very familiar to us: maize, sugarcane, uh, etc., sorghum, etc. And uh, around three percent of the total number of plants in the world is uh, um, C4 plants. So, and this is CAM pathway or Crassulacean acid metabolic pathway. Uh, this is uh, undertaken by certain plants like cacti and uh, pineapple. Uh, the strategy adopted by uh, these plants is that they accumulate carbon dioxide during night time when the stomata is open. Uh, in the daytime, stomata is closed obviously to conserve water, loss of water and uh, to prevent loss of water. And at night, stomata is open so that carbon dioxide can get into the leaves and uh, these plants actually convert these uh, carbon dioxide molecules to oxaloacetate and then to malic acid or malate. So basically this is conserved as uh, organic acids and during daytime the organic acids are split to release carbon dioxide which will be channeled to C3 cycle. So this is the uh, CAM pathway strategy of CAM plants. It collects carbon dioxide at night and during daytime Calvin cycle is done. 
so they save the uh, precious water also and the examples are uh, cacti orchids and uh, more familiar pineapple is there <coughs> and the strategy of uh, concentrating carbon dioxide for c4 plants is uh, uh, they they actually separate by space that is uh, the space of uh, mesophyll cell and bundle sheet cell are different and in cm pathway it is uh, the separation is by time that is uh, the day and night times are uh, are uh, chosen differently now it's actually basically night versus day and uh, this is the um, uh, the pictorial presentation of uh, c3 pathway c4 pathway and c am pathway and obviously uh, the c3 pathway is the one which eventually uh, causes or leads to the synthesis of carbohydrates and these are inhibitors of photosynthesis there are certain inhibitors which are used as herbicides and uh, specifically uh, there are certain uh, herbicides which specifically block electron carriage a mechanism in photosystem second examples are derivatives of urea uh, derivatives of uh, triacin and derivatives of uracil uh, like diuron atracin and bromouracil uh, the bromacil they are uh, they are uh, uh, acting as herbicides and blocking uh, electron transfer to plastoquinone so the, the plastoquinone will not be converted to plastoquinol so that's how they uh, act and uh, thank you thank you very much